Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a flip through of my latest illustrated journal. I have been working on this for six months, and now it's finished. It's time to show you what's inside of it so that I can close it, put it aside in these stack of journals, and start a new one. I do use my visual diaries for my travels, so today you're going to get a little bit of armchair travel, but mainly what you're going to get are techniques and strategies and tips and hacks throughout that I hope will inspire you when you are making your own journal pages. Whether uh, you're traveling or whether your journey is your day-to-day, -day, everyday life in your own backyard. I have an illustrated journal class online and it now has a free preview lesson. If you will join me at the end of this video, I will tell you more about how to get that there. This is a lot of videos, so please pull up a cup of tea and uh, let's just jump right in and get going. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books and paper, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go flip through a book. I love drawing and writing about the food and the meals that I have. They're uh, a good part of my memories. But even though they are a good part of my memories, you're going to find that 93% of the time, if I'm drawing about uh, eating and company and this time together, it's going to be of something that doesn't move. And that's because when my food comes, especially if it's hot, I want to enjoy the food and the company that I'm eating it with. And so that's not the time to be drawing in my book. The time to be drawing is before the food comes. And then so it's, I'm going to be drawing a lot of uh, bread baskets and water bottles and uh, table set up, whatnot, and things that um, aren't going to get cold. Then I can just add my notes about what we actually had and talked about. After this, we went to a show. We saw the magic flute, and I got a free brochure with my tickets. So when I got home, I just rough tore that up and put it in here, and then again added my notes. Look out for your free souvenirs. This is a grid, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The idea is that if you get behind in your book, you can just add little tiny, you know, a little tiny coffee cup here and a little salad bowl there and uh, stay on track and uh, it did not work. So instead, uh, I did a few things in real time, but I also went back and added some uh, bibs and free souvenirs, bibs and bobs that fit in that space. This is, I went to Turin, I went to Italy, and here is, as you can imagine, the Shroud of Turin is a big deal. It's not actually on display, it's way too fragile, but they promote the heck out of that thing. So I was able to get a free holy card and put that in, and then this was a visit to a museum. Here was a trip to a monastery in the mountains on the side of an alp. It was four miles up, a walk four miles up, and a walk four miles down. On this day, I learned a lot about my physical limitations. Also, I am really not probably going to ever be able to draw a whole monastery really well, so... Again, I took my ticket stub, I took a free brochure that I got from the gift shop and tore that up and I let that do the drawing for me. I'm not great at drawing, but I can glue stick with the best of them. This was a chapel in the monastery. I had a good time drawing, even though I was very cold because, did I mention it's on the side of an alp? But even this awkward a uh, drawing reminds me of sitting there and what I saw and thought, and it makes a good memory. Let's see, we went to a museum. 
or two or 17. And again, here's my tickets, my ticket stubs. I like to keep those. You can see here as you will throughout this book that I'm trying to fill up my pages a little bit here with, with mark making and with doodles. You don't have to do that, but it does make a, a page pretty and uh, look full and abundant. And this was all done after. I was just sitting somewhere uh, having a cup of tea and I just started doodling into the margins and into the empty spaces. So feel free to fill up those pages. If the color picks up the other color, that's even better. But don't worry about it. Just make it fun. This is a pocket that I made out of a business, out of an envelope, out of a bill I got. You can see it's got the cellophane thing for the address to show through. And then I put this in before I went out with my journal. I put a few pockets throughout the book because if I have a postcard or something else, maybe I don't want to glue down something this big. Or maybe there's writing on the back that I want to be able to read later. That's me posing in a villa, as one does. And so now I can just keep these loose, take them out and play with them in a pocket. This is my friend Matthew, and we travel together quite a bit. I've known him for 32 years. This is where we were having some coffee. It's a street scene in uh, Genoa. And all I did here was, again, I'm not great at urban sketching. I just did some super vague, messy, not perspective heavy sketching of my outlines. Then when I was home later, I added some watercolor wash that does not correspond to anything I saw in real life. It just makes it fun and it makes me happy. I love maps in my illustrated journals. I like to make them by hand, hand-drawn maps as a rule, especially if it's in my own neighborhood, maybe where I go shopping or a regular walk that I like. But this was of a whole city. And so again, this was free from tourist information and I just roughed toward that and then circled some of the places that I visited the most on my trip. Let's see, uh, I don't use a lot of photographs in my illustrated journals. Uh, I did a few when I got home. I did these on my printer, but you can also print them in almost any uh, place that's camera friendly. I see them in pharmacies and um, drugstores all the time. You just take your camera and turn on the Bluetooth and you can print up your photos to add to your diary. I like to use a smaller size so that you can move things around and draw around it and write around it and have fun with that. These were some churches in a little town called Osti, which I was super eager to see because they had the oldest churches in the area. This is the crypt of St. Lawrence. It was underneath as a crypt is. And I drew it with a water sol pen that had water soluble ink. And then I just later, when I was sitting in a cafe, I just activated that water soluble ink with one of my water brushes and made it look crypt like and fun. This was another church. And, you know, again, you can see it's, it's listing a little as my uh, buildings tend to do. And I don't care. It's, it's good enough for the likes of me. So my point being, please don't not draw your buildings just because you're not good at it. Draw them anyway. Or you can even tell people it really look like that. I don't know, the leaning Church of Pisa of, of Asti. Okay, Fib. Uh, here again, I'm adding uh, lots of extra foliage and, and just little fun doodles to fill up that empty space. Has nothing to do with what I saw. It's just 
makes the page interesting. This is a map of Osti. And again, I've gone in here and I've written notes in pencil about some of the places I visited because it was a busy day and I would have forgot all of this if I had made these baby notes, which I then could use to write here when I had a little more time. I could take those pencil notes, flesh them out, and tell a story about my day. I do love old cemeteries, and here's one of the dozens of cemetery angels that I took from uh, this yard in Genoa. This is the skyline from a free brochure. Uh, I can draw a fair coffee cup, a ticket, and just little notes about what an everyday is like. Here we are on the side of a hill and uh, ticket stops. This is uh, a capital from a column in an old 11th century monastery that was in Turin. And I, well, I love monasteries. I love old churches. There's another view. Again, I had a blast sitting there on a sunny day drawing this. It doesn't matter that it doesn't have a lot of detail or fine points or perspective. Just get in there, draw what you see, enjoy your day, and make a memory. This is a floor rubbing, Vita Amor, Life and Death, and they said it. It was a floor rubbing from an old church. And here I was just sitting at a table, people watching, enjoying the day, and catching up on some of my notes. I often add my words later. And I have a whole video about how to keep up with your pages while enjoying your travel and your days without losing your mind. I've got a link to that in the text below this video. If you want some more tips, hacks, and ideas about how to stay caught up. One of them is write later. I actually added that at the time. There were some gorgeous lions in this, in this town, and I did them in several different ways. I enjoyed it so much. This one, I didn't even draw with a pencil. I actually just loose draw it with some um, gray ink and a brush just to make it loose and easy and atmospheric. Another day I went back and I did draw it in pencil with a bit more detail. And then later, much later, I added the, the wash. Here's a different kind of pocket. Again, I added it before I left and you can see it's from the passport office, it's a teeny tiny stuff. I like this small, it's a small size envelope that makes a nice pocket for these ticket stubs. That's a bookmark from the gift shop. And here my page is getting pretty messy. That's okay. This is from, uh, I got some pastry and it came in this tissue paper bag. So I rough tore that and glued down a bit of that. And then once it was dry, I added some color, just some watercolor. Not everywhere, just a bit of shading. Ticket stubs and then just, um, again, part of a paper bag. But it was an Italian paper bag. So just getting some stuff down there, making sure it doesn't end up in a shoebox or at the bottom of my handbag. Just glue it down. You can make it work later. You're good. Here's another map. This one's of uh, Turin. And um, uh, I have just drawn around some of the places that, that I walked and visited because again, if I don't do that right away, I will probably forget. 
the ways that I got to places like my favorite pizza place. Where? So here's another. This pocket is made from a little sack that my postcards came in when I bought them. So it's got the picture of that monastery on them. Just a cheap bag sack. And then some, I really want to draw that at some point and that lion goddess. And I don't know when, but until then she's going to live in this little sack. But yeah, I got that at the gift shop. I love postcards. This is from an entirely different trip altogether. It's actually one from about a month ago uh, when I went to Shrewsbury Abbey here in Britain. What happened was I left some blank pages when I was doing the Italy pages. I left a few blank pages because I knew that when I got home, I probably was going to be gluing in stuff and adding in drawings and notes and stories. And um, as it turns out, I didn't. So, <laughs> so I was looking at my book a couple of uh, a month ago when I was going to Shrewsbury, and I had these blank pages in the middle of my my book, just these blank pages. So that's why it's out of order. Here's a postcard from Shrewsbury Abbey. And this is a 12th century Ribadeau with, uh, that's, well, with some saints, a Welsh saint here. And this is my version of it. I used a water-soluble pen. And you can see they don't really have much in the way of faces or of detail in any way. Once they were drawn, very messy drawings, I activated it with a, a water brush. And now I have this great, messy, atmospheric drawing. And that's what it really looks like. And you see, it's, it's a good forgiving way to do it because it's already so eroded that it's kind of looking like that in real life. These are some Welsh holy cards that I got at the Abbey. I took one and I glued it down on here and here. So it's like a little tuck spot. And now I can put this other Welsh holy card in there and keep that in place. Now it is April and we're in France. I waited quite a long time for my food to come out. So I decided to draw a castle that was in front of me. And of course, uh, since I got this far on my castle, my, my food came. But again, I have a great memory of sitting there chit-chatting and waiting and having fun. These again are what I call free souvenirs. This is from some cut flowers that I bought. It was on the, the little bag they came in. And, you know, this is a hummus wrapper. And it was just on my little tub of hummus and I couldn't just leave it there. So I glued it down and just assembling the pages out of little bibs and bobs that are your everyday memories. Again, we've got your bread basket here because it doesn't move. And when my pizza came, I was ready to go. This is um, a not very successful drawing of a timbered building in um, Chinon, where we were staying. But uh, I really like sitting outside and looking at it, so I'm not, I'm not sorry I gave it a shot. This is uh, a breakfast. Also, we had outside beautiful sunny day. And you can see it is super loose and not a lot of detail. I've gone in and added some labels here, some captions. So now you know that this is a, a croissant because I say it is. So just be bold, get in there. Uh, this is from, oh, this is for my birthday. And uh, <laughs> at, the, at the restaurant, they brought me a, um, 
a, a panna cotta with a candle in it. And yes, they, they do make fusses sometimes over you in uh, fun French restaurants. Not often, but they did that day. It was pretty embarrassing, but a good memory. Let's see. This is, oh, this is one of my favorites. This is the Priory of Saint-Léonard. It's an old priory from the 11th century, and all that's left are ruins of this magnificent, huge uh uh, compound from back in the day. Now that all that's left are um, beautiful, beautiful, broken, ruined pieces. And it's one of my favorite places in the world. I sit there whenever I get the chance and just do these again, very messy, imprecise drawings. And then I filled up these empty spa spaces much later with some just little watercolor uh, foliage, blue foliage, and then some dots over here, making the blue and the blue and the blue, just for fun. Most of my traveling is uh, goes around two things, and that is flea markets and uh, old churches. And in this part of France that I was visiting, there are a lot of Romanesque churches. That is churches from the 10th, 11th, 12th century from when it was occupied by uh, the Romans. And here we have one. It's an old abandoned, uh, an old abbey, not quite abandoned. And this is one of the capitals. That is one of the lions that was on top of a column. And here we have another capital. And this one was of some lions kind of joined in the middle there. Drawing capitals and old carvings is one of my favorite things to do. Again, by this time, they're over a thousand years old. They're so eroded that if you draw in a messy, imprecise way, that's what the stone looks like itself. It's very forgiving. Ah, some friends made us dinner, and our friends had a, <laughs> a delightful dog named Tokyo Labracuse, and that's Tokyo. I like having dinner with Tokyo. Okay, but, you know, can't always be dinner. This is just a tea bag from my morning tea, but uh, just reminds me very much of what was going on, and it let me make a yellow page. So don't be afraid to just add... Bits of menus, tea bags, food wrappers, boxes. And then I filled up some of the blank space with just a, a fun border there. This page is not really uh, a great success, but I had fun making it. It's from a 9th century sanctuary in cravant -les, -Cout les couteaux and um, it is uh, beautiful, haunted, mysterious, and uh, I, it, it just, it just uh, feels like home to me. But I uh, was with other people that day who were not as, an, <laughs> as obsessed as I was, and so I had to draw very quickly and I didn't get much down. And what there was was messy. So I came back later to try to give this page a little TLC, and I added some quotes. And this one's by Annie Dillard. I'm drawn to this spot. I come to it as to an oracle. Certainly how I feel about this sanctuary. This is from a present from one of my friends in France, and this was on the, she made it herself, and then she has this, uh, this was the label on the, the, the little sack, so while I didn't draw the present, I have this kind of mixed media raffia here, reminding me of that 
pretty little package. It's a cheese board. This was a fantastic day, so I wrote quite a bit about it. Uh, it also focused around a meal, so uh, our friends had these paper napkins. I unfolded it right there at the table and glued it in the book, and so it's gone transparent and looks fun and funky. And I think they're still gossiping about me, tearing up napkins and gluing them, but um, they'll live. The thing about doing stuff like this at the table or in public, in um, museums and whatnot, is that after you've done it a time or two, people forgive you. In fact, after you do it a time or two, they expect it. And they, if you don't do it, they'll say, hey, where's your book? Why aren't you tearing up napkins? I promise you this will happen. Uh, this is some, uh, some flowers called Muguet. It's a lily of the valley, and it's a symbol of uh, May and springtime in France. So, um, And you can see I did not have the time or the patience to really draw a, a very accurate, botanically accurate, lily of the valley. I just put in some super loose and wet foliage, and then later went in and added my bells of flowers without any attempt to make them look realistic. Again, just fun, messy pages, especially here where I've got part of a paper bag that some um, fruit came in, and this is from uh, some grocery store soup. And so, and this is from an, a magazine that was free, a free brochure from a, a, a supermarket. So keep your eyes out for things that you might throw away or recycle that you can turn into a page, a messy, fun page of memories. Now we are back in Wales. Uh, this is a castle I visited with my friend uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it's from the free map that we got with our tickets. Because, again, I'm not really ever going to be able to draw a very accurate castle compound. That was also from the brochure. I have another one of those pockets that I've made from an envelope. And inside I have carefully added some dried flowers from uh, that I collected on my travels. That's some of that lily of the valley, that muguet, and some lavender. And after they were nice and a uh, little less delicate, they're still pretty delicate, but they're going to be fine. I put them into my envelope. And these are from some uh, beautiful tulips that I bought for uh, where we uh, when I was staying on a trip, and when they were finished, I couldn't bear to quite get rid of them, so I dried a lot of them, and then made them into a little fun, funky flower. Let's see. I went to Shrewsbury. I've already said that, and. Like I said, the pages were out of order because there were some blank ones there. Now we're catching up to chronological order and, you know, nothing fancy, piece of cake and some tea. I don't know about you, but a piece of cake and tea is pretty much what makes the world go around. The next day I went to a town called Thlandwortet and went hiking. It was sublime. I was all on my own for two days. I went hiking for 10 miles and I met that guy and a lot of his um, ilk, a lot of sheep that day. And so much so that I kept finding these um, bits of wool on shrubs and on the ground. And I found one and just instead of gluing it in, it would never stay. I used a bulldog, bulldog clip to put in 
this little bit of wool, which very much reminds me of that walk. I have not finished these pages, uh, maybe tomorrow, but it's from a cathedral in Cardiff near here where I live. This is a good point, uh, to show you how, this is how a lot of my pages look when I get home from my trip, especially if it's a day trip. I've and actually, it didn't even look like this. It was a pencil sketch. And then yesterday, I added some wash. And then after that dried, I glued in free brochure. And now I have plenty of space for adding my notes about the day. And if there's space left over, I can fill that up with some mark making and borders. But this is often how the pages look. I do not just sit where I am and write for an hour and a half about my stories. I think I wouldn't have any friends left if I did that. Uh, this is, uh, again, Caref Carefully Castle, where we went. Uh, yeah, that one. And I did manage to get in a little bit of it, you know, the front there. And this is actually from yesterday. I went to Bristol and I drew, they have a, a church there from the 13th century called St. Mary Redcliffe. And I drew uh, some corbels, corbels, corbels. And this is the messy version. And then I did a little bit here of a close up. So you might call the details. So this is the detail that would go there. Let's see, this is, uh, again, not really chronological. Uh, this is from that trip to Thaland with the, the one with the sheep. And this was my train journey from Swansea, blah, 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 to Shrewsbury. And here's all these little Welsh towns that I passed. That was a beautiful, beautiful train ride. And then here is a bit of a free map of Shrewsbury, where I went to the Abbey and did some wandering around. And then I just filled up the page. You know what I did? I actually added some washi tape here. I don't use it very often, but this was very pretty and it picked up the blues and the periwinkle colors. So if you've got washi tape, if you've got stickers, again, your mark making, your borders, make your pages colorful. Usually in the back of a diary, a journal, illustrated journal, I will have one or two pages where I have tried out some sketches that I really did not feel comfortable about, especially faces. But um, I gave them a shot and sort of a dry run, a little bit of a draft. So that's something you can do to keep a couple of extra pages for uh, being brave and taking a chance there. I have a free preview lesson in my online illustrated journal class. It's a, an online course about teaching you how to make and keep a visual diary. And this preview lesson is about how to look at a scene and pick the easiest, least hard thing there so that you can get up and start making a page fearlessly with no excuses. So the link to that preview lesson to the class in the preview lesson is in the text below this video. Please go and try that test drive the class. I hope that you will want to buy it. But if it's not in your budget, go take the preview class anyway. Maybe it will get you up and making some pages and that's good too. If you have any feedback or questions, please let me know in the comments and uh, I love to compare notes. Until next week, happy making.